Welcome once again to Fantasy Fiction Focus. We're here today with Tina Amiri, who is a uh, author of psychological thrillers. Welcome. Hi. So how are things going today? Oh, things are going pretty good. A little cold here in Barrie. <laughs> All right, nice. You're in, uh, you're in Ontario, aren't you? Now, you, you, That's right. Psychological thriller. Now, your uh, latest book is called Whatever the Impulse. Now, we immediately want to hear all about it, so tell us everything. Everything. Well, I better not tell you everything, but it is, um, it is a very character-driven book. Um, it's about uh, a young man who um, grows up in a very unusual situation. Uh, it's uh, somewhat abusive, somewhat isolating. Um, he's told at a very young age that he really just cannot talk to other people. He should stay away from people, that there's some kind of impending doom if, you know, he really does, like, get too close to other people. So it's, uh, you don't know really what's going on at the beginning, if it's witness protection or something else, you have no idea. But the um, additional weird thing is that the prologue shows you that his uh, guardian, his father, uh, is showing him how to, uh, is actually teaching him sign language so he can actually go into public and only talk to him and sort of avoid talking to the majority of humanity. So he does end up working in a, a bar restaurant, which is, uh, you know, owned by his father, and um, that's when everything kind of goes awry, like when he's uh, 19, and people start to, like, uh, it starts with a girl who, of course, <laughs> doesn't give up on him and has an interest in him and starts getting him to break the rules, and then everything goes, you know, nuts after that, and he ends up finding out what the truth is, and he ends up in a totally opposite um, situation in part two. So part one is all in Oregon in like, you know, a dark, shady kind of environment. And then it, he ends up in L.A. in like the completely opposite lifestyle where he has to be in the public eye all the time. But he, he isn't normal because he hasn't had a normal education. He doesn't even have normal socialization. So his moral compass is a little messed up. And that's why it's called whatever the impulse, because more and more he starts to fall back on, well, I'm just going to do whatever I think I need to do. So now this is for, uh, is this uh, for uh, young adults or teenagers or, uh, or adults? Because it uh, centers around 19 year olds, I kind of figured it was young adult and I am marketing it that way. But um, I'm getting a lot of interest from people who are much, much older than that. Like I've had people read it from like 20 to 80. And one consistent thing that I hear is that you can't put it down, which is wonderful. Um, but I, I'm not getting any discrimination based on the type of book. I'm not getting, oh, well, I, you know, I read it because I know you and, <laughs> but I wouldn't have read it otherwise because it's a YA book. I'm not getting that. Pe people of all ages are enjoying the book for what it is. Now, you, you had mentioned, uh, I think I'd seen in either another interview or on your website or something that this uh, is like the, the the latest version of this book, and you went through quite a few uh, different um, versions of this story before you you know hit upon the final one that you really liked. Now, can you tell us about that? Yes, this book has had a, a very long history of editing. <laughs> um, I mean, I when you first finish a book, I, I, it's probably like that for all authors. You finish it and you think it's perfect, it's great. I'm going to start submitting it now, and I mean, I did do that. And some people would give you a little bit of feedback, like some people were kind enough to give you a little bit of feedback, even if it was just a line. Um, and you would go, I would start rewriting. I never thought it was perfect right away. Like if someone gave me advice, I, I went right back to the drawing board and I started to see things that they were saying in other parts of the book, even if they only focused on one thing. Then I've met people who are just, they were just more advanced, um, you know, in, well, age or even in uh, creative writing, like they had parents, they were teachers, they would like read it and give me a lot more advice. Uh, then I even um, submitted it to some places that you had to pay like book doctors and of course they gave you a lot more advice because you were paying for it. Um, I even then I had an agent who was instrumental in teaching me like how to write effectively and how to cut all the waste words out and all kinds of things. So, I mean, that was actually a couple of years of editing there alone. And then I had uh, 
um, people in the industry, even the movie industries. I had somebody who was once interested in perhaps making it into a movie, so they got me to reformat the whole thing just to be more movie friendly, script friendly. And then that person ended up changing jobs and sort of just left me hanging. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of interesting situations where I was left hanging, literally, like the people would disappear. They seemed very interested, and all of a sudden I couldn't even reach them. Um, and then the last situation was I was with a publisher through my agent who actually passed away um, while I was while my book was still with this publisher. And I went through three years of editing with that publisher. And then for no reason, they didn't want the book after. I mean, there might have been one, but I didn't get an answer. So, <laughs> so yes, um, it's a better book for all that, from all that. But uh, it was a very long process to get it to where it's at. Now, well, sometimes it can be kind of, I mean, it, sometimes it, we get asked these questions all the time. How long does it take to write a book? And sometimes, I mean, I, I've written a book in, in three months, and sometimes it's taken three years. You just don't really know. But now, have you always been interested in the uh, in the genre of psychological thrillers? Yeah, I, I always have been. I didn't know that's what my interest was. I just, my mind just goes that way. I guess I think abnormal human psychology is kind of, interesting uh, you always uh, like you know you'll hear stories on the news about what people do to each other and you just think what why do people do these things and what's going on in their heads and people are interested they're horrified by it but they love hearing about it i think they want to know all the details they wish there was more information in that newspaper article so anyway i, I guess it's just the same for me i just figured um it's not real so i mean you could do whatever you want you know nobody's getting hurt <laughs> but you're writing it as fiction and so therefore it's kind of interesting now these uh, characters in the book and everything the whole story is not based on any anything that's happened to you in your own life or anything i mean are, are the characters based on uh, on people that you you've met or are they completely made up luckily they're not based on anybody i know or anything that has happened to anyone i know <laughs> so that's a good thing <laughs> they're all completely from your wild imagination that's right now, is there going to be a, a, any sort of sequel or an, another part to this story, or is it all, all done now and you're going to start uh, on something completely different? Yeah, I, I kind of would like to write a sequel because I think it could be done almost easier than coming up with a whole new plot. And sometimes people, well, obviously people like sequels, but then I also have the opposite feeling where it's like a movie you write one uh, you know you write one script and it's great but then you do a sequel and everybody talks about how the first part was better and that they should never have done a sequel and i just don't want to be one of those people <laughs> that did the sequel that should never have been done like sometimes you just have to let it lie so my my hope is that i'm going to come up with a whole new plot a whole new story before i ever think of doing a sequel i, I would only do that if i was if it like the publisher demanded it i think i'm going to start with a new story so, so this one, uh, the uh, whatever the impulse, it, it is really finished. I mean, it, it's it, it would be sort of forced then, really, if you want to do a sequel. You think? I think so. I think I could write it fairly easily, but it would be. Uh, I'd only do it at like someone's request. I just don't want to do the bad sequel. I don't want to be the person who wrote the bad sequel. <laughs> so, so, what are you working on next? Well. I have a few ideas and I haven't decided which one I'm going with. So far I've been so busy with events and just life I haven't actually written a second book yet. So we'll have to see. <laughs> but you must have some ideas. Is it going to be in the same uh, genre uh, as this one? I believe so, yes. I'd like to write another psychological thriller. I like writing family oriented type, well no, let me let me uh, rephrase that. I don't like family stories that are normal. <laughs> I enjoy writing dysfunctional, bizarre, strange family situations. Um, I, it's kind of funny when I'm writing, anytime there's a normal parent-child interaction that's supposed to be normal, I have a really hard time writing it. <laughs> if it's completely demented, I have no problem writing it. So, so uh, yeah, I just want to be clear on that. Now, so have you always been a, a, a writer as, as such? I mean, I'm not saying you probably you know, wrote your first psychological thriller when you were four years old or anything, but have you always been uh, interested in writing at least? 
Yeah, I can answer that question pretty easily. Um, I have always written before I even knew what I was doing. Um, I literally was around four years old when I started writing. I would uh, take little pieces of paper, fold them up, cut them up, staple them together, and I would write these stories. Um, now, I started off writing these things called Donkey and Teddy because I had this pet donkey this little stuffed donkey. My sister had this teddy bear and they were always at war. In my head, they were always at war. So they should have been called, you know, donkey versus teddy. But again, they were, you know, it was all like, you know, bloodshed and <laughs> turmoil. They weren't nice stories about going on a picnic, even when I was four and five and six. And uh, I wrote uh, my for real novel when I was about 10. And what but, so the, a, a novel when you were 10, uh, did you ever do anything with that? I had a teacher who actually said, you know what, if I help you edit this, we could publish this. But every year of my young life, you know, whenever I wrote something, I knew immediately after that I could do a little bit better because the learning curve was already starting. So I never said, oh, yeah, let's just go ahead. I always knew, oh, no, this isn't good enough anymore. I could do better. And then I would write something better. But then it was like, oh, no, I could do better again. And that really never stopped. <laughs> so it, it's so you've, uh, got some, you've got some ideas then. If, uh, if, though, even if you've sort of uh, well, not abandoned those, but put them to one side, are there elements in those earlier things that you might uh, you'll mine those for ideas for later books, or are they just something that you just see as almost like training? I did think about it. Um, I don't think I can use the same stories. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit like training. Um, I could see a lot of consistencies in like the type of characters I have. Like a lot of people write about themselves. It's really their alter ego they're writing about. You know, I could write a story about a woman who lives in Barrie, you know, who <laughs> is trying to solve a, myst a murder mystery, but I don't do that. My characters um, have always been male. I have never written a, ma a female main character, so I don't know. I, I'm just different. I'm in dif I'm different in many ways, but even in writing. <laughs> now you do work for other people too, I think, as well. You know, I mean, obviously you're editing your own work, but you also do quite a bit of work for for other writers too, don't you? Yes, I do. I still do it, and I enjoy doing it. And if I didn't have a full time job, I would probably do that full time. I would. I'd love to be a book doctor full time. Um, so I. I guess I'm just like an editor. People always find out about me. Ask me if I get me their book. I do a lot over the internet. I mean, I've um, had clients all the way in like Bermuda, uh, Scotland, you know, all over the world, and it's all done um, through the computer. And they get a pretty hardy um, <laughs> edit. They get pretty hardy edit, edit notes. So I really enjoy it. And now this is not. Uh, this wouldn't just be like copy editing, checking grammar and punctuation. This is more of a substantive edit where you're telling them this is not good. This is good. This is what you improve. Uh, really yes. constructive stuff. Yes, everything from unnecessary words gets striked out to entire like pieces of an entire chapter and uh, an, an overview. Like I might say, you really have to like get rid of, like get condensed part one into, you know, many less chapters. You know, you could cut at least a hundred thousand words out of this, you know, 250,000 word book. Uh, I mean, I, I actually start from scratch. I, I tell them everything. I'm not, I guess in a way, um, I'm not very nice. I, <laughs> I don't start, uh, some editors will, do it in phases and um, you know just look for grammar at first and then they'll say okay now cut out this now do this I kind of like to dump it all out at once because that's just how I do it that's I just figure if you're going to ask I'm going to tell you <laughs> what I think and uh, a lot of this came about through my own agent um, he actually sort of hired me on to do uh, work for him uh, while I was with him as a client um, I, I won his contest that he had out for many years <laughs> where he said um, I'm going to give a prize to the first person who ever sends in a submission that is a hundred percent grammatically perfect and uh, I think he made a mistake which he said like don't uh, <laughs> don't come back to me on it if I did make a mistake but anyway I, I, I apparently won that contest after like him doing his agency for about 10 years so 
anyway, not because of that, but eventually I did end up doing editing for him. And then when he passed away, I just kept on with the clients. And now I just do it, you know, just random people. Yeah, well, I think it's important. I think uh, most people, especially people who are self-published, uh, I think they they uh, they uh, people read the stuff for them, friends, relatives, things like that, even fellow writers. But really, we all need someone to say this is not good, or this is great, or you could stretch this and improve this, expand this section. You know. Now That's you're cool. not um, your yours. Uh, this book, uh, whatever the impulse is, not self-published. It's it's with the traditional publisher, correct? That's right. Yes, it's with Caliber and Press. Um, it, I'm actually through an imprint, Sienta Sordida. So, uh, yeah, it's um, sort of a. Uh, oh, sorry, proceed. No, so uh, had you considered self publishing it? I mean, did it take a while to get it noticed, or were you always going to go with a traditional, uh, the traditional route? I always figured I would go through a traditional route. I mean, some of that, I guess, is just ego. I, you just want to see if you can do it, if you can get somebody to accept you. Um, I mean, the best book in the world could be self-published, but you just grow up thinking that this is how it's done, and you know, you want to see if you can do it. And it does take a while. Um, but but there's a lot of options out there nowadays. I mean, there isn't just Random House and Penguin. There's you know people who do only eBooks. There's people who do eBooks and uh, paper. Um, but they're not, they're smaller houses and they do print on demand and it's not as difficult to get accepted. Like there's so many levels of publishing. So uh, I mean, you just have to know what you want to do and aim for those publishers. Just keep submitting. Yeah, but of course, it still has to be good, and no doubt your book is very good, and that's why people are flocking to the stores to buy it, correct? Well, I've had really good feedback. Like I said, um, so far, 100% of reviews say that it's a page turner and that you can't put it down, so <laughs> I guess that's good news. Now, what are you doing to promote it? Obviously, you've got a website and social media and things like most people do. Are you uh, doing, um, do you go to uh, events and conferences and things? And I presume you do bookstore signings and things locally? Yes, I just had my first uh, Barry book signing um, yesterday. No, Saturday. And um, that, was, that, that was fun. Um, I actually had a big book launch where that was pretty much where everybody I knew picked up their book. <laughs> so from this point on it's all strangers um, so I haven't had a lot of events yet I think I'll be doing probably a Sudbury book signing because I'm originally from Sudbury uh, I'll see what else uh, I can pull off um, there's a video that I sometimes circulate um, sometimes all over the world um, but people I think people tend to just watch the video go hey that's interesting but I don't know if they're so much interested in buying a book <laughs> see you never know how these things are going to work out like because I actually don't really know how many books I've sold um, you know royalty checks like you said uh, earlier before we went on air it's sometimes uh, you don't always get paid right away like the publisher doesn't get paid right away so there could be a big lag in knowing how many sales you actually have yeah well it sounds like things are going reasonably well with this thing so 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 people can buy this where where can they buy this book if they want to get it well, right in canada you can buy it through the best place is probably through chapters it's online and uh right now it's in the berry store and in a couple of toronto uh the bigger chapter stores in toronto is there an ebook version? There is. There, it is on Kindle. So if you're uh, an Amazon shopper, it's every country has this book. <laughs> uh, you can buy it in print, or you can buy it as a Kindle version. So there's no excuse for people are not buying this book at all, then. That's right. <laughs> Correct. Look, it, it sounds like everything seems to be be going swimmingly so far. So we wish you all the best with that. Thanks for being on here today. It's Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome, and uh, I say uh, best of luck with this, and I'm sure we'll uh, we'll keep in touch and be and be uh, uh, and we'll see each other electronically anyway on on the on the book circuit at some point. So thanks for being. Thank you. <laughs>